The Internet of Things, or IoT, is all about interconnecting devices. And one lightweight, secure way for online devices to communicate is using MQTT. MQTT is a published subscribe-based messaging protocol that avoids direct connections between devices by relaying data through a central server called the broker. This is really desirable in IoT because it's easy to add new devices without touching the existing infrastructure, and since new devices only need to communicate with the broker, they don't actually need to be compatible with the other clients. In this video, I'll explain how the MQTT model works, go over some advantages and disadvantages, and finally, use it to toggle a digital output. To get an idea of how the publish subscribe or pub sub messaging model works, let's start with a real life example. Let's say I have a switch connected to one device and I want to use it to toggle the state of a light attached to another separate device. Traditionally, I would just connect them directly. But then if I added new devices with more lights and wanted them to be triggered by the same source, I would need more connections and the same goes for adding more triggers. This gets very messy and difficult to maintain Especially with IoT, you could have a whole building full of lights and switches where each is a separate device. So instead of doing it this way, I can use the publish subscribe system. This way, I can have the device with the switch publish the switch state under some topic, say switch, for example. Then I just subscribe to that topic from another device, and any time a message is published with a matching topic, the broker will relay the new information over, and this device can use that to toggle a light. Now, if I go to add more lights or more switches, I just have one new connection for each client to the server, creating a nice hub and spoke model that is easy to maintain, rather than the spider web that we would traditionally need. What's more is that this only demonstrates how one topic can work between devices. You can have as many topics as you want for your application, with each one having different clients on either end, being one-to-one, many-to-many, or any combination. The PubSub architecture is very flexible and scalable, making it great for IoT applications. Now, let's make this a reality. Here, I have a Groove Epic Edge Programmable Industrial Controller that has a light hooked up to it. I can use the screen to toggle the light, but I'm not always going to be standing right next to the device. So, I'm going to set up the Groove Epic to be an MQTT client that is subscribed to a specific control topic to toggle the light based on the messages that come in on that topic. Then, all I need to do is publish to that topic from my laptop, which is a separate client, and I'll be able to control the light from anywhere in the world. To control the light, I'll be using Node-RED, since it has a basic MQTT client built in, and it's running on the Groove Epic right out of the box. To find out more about either Groove Epic or Node-RED, check out opto22.com. Now let's get that client set up. To get to Node-RED, I just go to my hostname, slash Node-RED. Then I just proceed through security and log in. I can drag a subscription node in right away and double click it to edit its settings. For this example, I'll be using the public broker. And in my case, mqtt.groove.com. Here, you could use a broker running on a local device like your Mac, Linux, or Windows PC, a Raspberry Pi, or a cloud service like Amazon Web Services. The default secure port for MQTT is 8883, but I'll just be using the insecure broker port 1883. Many brokers are encrypted or password protected, but this one is open to the public, so I'll leave username and password blank. The final settings screen shows three additional optional messages birth, death, and will. I'll come back and set these up later once we know everything else is working. So now with the broker set up, we're almost ready to subscribe. The next thing to look at is the topic. The topic namespace is an unmanaged way to identify your messages. I say unmanaged because there is no enforced format or standard to follow. Each client determines the topic of that device's messages, which means you, as the programmer, have to be consistent and specific with your topics and you'll need to share it with anyone else that interacts with your broker, since they'll need to know what to subscribe to and what to publish to. This is a lot of freedom, but I'll keep things simple for this example and just use workshop slash switch, where switch is called a subtopic of workshop. I could have workshop itself be a subtopic of something larger, 
or I could just publish directly to the topic switch, but that's going to depend on your application. Next, I can choose the quality of service, which is a big part of MQTT. In short, it determines how much of a guarantee of delivery you want for your message. Zero quality of service means that the broker will receive the message at most once, but might miss it since there is no confirmation made. Quality of service one means that the broker will receive the message at least once, but may get duplicates while it's waiting for confirmation. And finally, quality of service two means that the broker will receive the message exactly once. The highest quality of service sounds the most attractive, and for control purposes, it is really the only option worth considering, but it does come at the cost of extra network traffic, since the broker and client must exchange confirmation packets, particularly for quality level two, since both sides have to acknowledge the publication. Now, with my subscribed client all set up, I'll need to use this switch message to toggle a light. To do that, I'll use the snap pack write node. These are used to interface with the I.O. modules installed on the Groove Epic chassis. This will just connect to the localhost device, since Node-RED itself is running on the Epic, and I'm going to be writing to the digital output I have set up on the system strategy called panel red LED. And that's all there is to set up. If I wanted, just for testing, I could also add a debug node to double check the output here as well. Now, with my Node-RED flow all set up, I'll hit deploy, and now I just need to publish to this topic to test it out. To do that, I'll be using a separate client running on this laptop called mqtt.fx. Once it's loaded, I just bring up my server list, and I can go ahead and add the broker. In this case, it'll be the same public broker that I added to Node-RED. It's at mqtt.groove.com, and I am using the insecure broker port 1883, and I'll not be putting in a username or password since it's open to the public. Now I'll just hit apply, close this window, and connect to the broker. Now all I need to do is publish to that same workshop slash switch topic and give it a message. And in this case, I want to turn the switch on, so I'll send the message true. Now all I have to do is publish, and the light comes on. Fantastic. The connection is both sound and very fast. And if I were to use my own broker, I could encrypt the data and securely password protect it too. In this case, the publishing client is my laptop. This represents the switch. It publishes the switch state up to the broker, and then the broker relays that message down to Node-RED on the Groove Epic, where it makes the control decision to turn on the light. So now that we know everything is working, let's take a quick look at some of the more advanced features that I skipped. Birth, death, will messages, retained topics, and finally, wildcards. So if I go back to Node-RED and bring open the broker properties, I can see those three messages, birth, death, and will. Like the node info tab says, these messages are sent whenever this device connects, disconnects, and is forcibly disconnected from the broker. For example, I can have the birth message public under the topic workshop slash status and give it the payload online, since that will be the status once this message is sent. Because I want this to arrive at least once, I'll give it the quality of service level one, and I'll turn the retain flag to true. You'll see what this does in just a moment. Similarly, with the close message or death message, I can say offline, since when I successfully disconnect, the workshop status will be offline. I'll give it the same quality of service and retain flag. Now, with these two messages set up, I can just listen to this one workshop status topic, and I'll be able to track the state of this device as it comes on and offline. But if it drops unexpectedly without sending a disconnect message, I want to know that too. This is handled by the will or last will and testament message. This message gets sent by the broker if this client ever unexpectedly disconnects. 
So in this case, I'm going to use that same workshop status tag and give it the payload disconnected, since it is an abrupt disconnection that causes this message to be sent. Now, I'll save these new settings, deploy, and head over to MQTTFX to subscribe to this message. What's great about the retain flag for MQTT topics is that I can now subscribe to this status and I'll get the message right away when I connect because it was set to retain it. Now the broker will keep track of the latest copy of this tag to come in, retain that data, and send it out to anyone that comes and subscribes to this topic. While I can't use this feature to request the state of the device at any time, it does mean that new devices to join the system are aware of the health of all the other clients that are already connected. So now, to test this out, if I go and make a change to my Node-RED flow and deploy, that should mean that this client disconnected and reconnected. And if I go back to MQTT, I can see that a disconnect message went through and let me know that my device was offline, and then it came back up and I got another message. Finally, I want to see the last will and testament. So to test that one out, I'm going to try and use a wildcard. A wildcard is essentially a way to select any matching topic. For example, if I wanted the status of every device, not just the workshop, I could replace workshop with the single level wildcard plus. And what this does is plus will replace anything that matches a subtopic status. So if I subscribe to that, I'll be getting both a copy of the workshop status and a copy of the developer status, which is another machine running in the building. The other thing I can do is subscribe to workshop slash hashtag or the pound character. This is a multi-level wildcard that will match all subtopics of workshop, including both switch and status. And if status had any subtopics, it would get those as well. It's also possible to get everything matching every single topic by just using a single multi-level wildcard on its own. But this gets a little bit loud, so it's usually not recommended. I'll unsubscribe from these topics and just use that single level wildcard plus slash status to test the last will and testament. When I subscribe, I see the retained messages come in, then, when I unplug the Ethernet cable in my Groove Epic, it disconnects from the internet, and the broker lets all the subscribed clients know that this device has dropped. This disconnected here is that last will and testament message. Using this, it's possible to monitor the health of your various devices, and even have a system in place to alert you when something is down, attempt to reboot it, or shift that device's responsibilities over to another system. And there you have it. There's a quick run through of MQTT and its place in the Internet of Things. To learn more, check out opto22.com. Thanks for watching.